this morning. Let us gather as the days grow shorter and we work to complete the harvest before the long winter comes. Come, let us gather during the season when the wheel of life turns and the veil between this world and the next grows thin. Come, let us gather to remember, to honor, to grieve all those departed souls whom we miss so. Come, this morning let us gather to celebrate that which was, that which is, and that which will be. Come, let us gather, as always, embraced by the love of this community, bound by our covenant, and united by love. Come, let us worship. Long summer has faded. These last days of October they mark the beginning of winter. For now, there's no denying it. Winter is, is coming. The frost has taken our young, tender plants. Leaves have begun to fall from the trees. The geese have arrived from the north. The days are cooler. The weather is unsettled, and the evenings are suddenly dark. You know, this time of year, as the world says goodbye to all that was green and prepares for the coming darkness of winter, we too are reminded of our own mortality. We too are reminded of all those we've lost. You know, it is said that this time of year, the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest. We have many traditions that remind us of this. In a few days, we'll mark Halloween, when our children will dress up as skeletons and monsters and try to confront the fear we all have of our coming death. Soon Catholics will mark All Saints Day. Protestants will mark All Souls Day. Both holidays are a time to commemorate the dead. And soon our Hispanic neighbors will celebrate El Dia de los Muertos. If we were members of a traditional Mexican family, this evening we might go have a picnic on the graves of our family members, celebrating, remembering, honoring all those we've lost. You know, most of us are, are far from the graves of our ancestors, but we can also honor those who've gone before us. And we'll do that in a few minutes after the musical interlude. I will invite you all forward to light a candle, and light a candle for any of those you've lost, for all of your beloved departed. I'd ask you to line up in the center aisle, and after the musical interlude, you'll be invited to light a candle, and then please go to the side aisles to find your seat. I invite you now into a time of quiet, time of centering and preparing for this ceremony. And now as we move to begin our remembrance ritual, I will light the candle of remembrance. This morning I'd like to say a special prayer, a prayer for all those who lost their lives one year ago today the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Come to our minds, 
images of dear companions who once graced our lives, images of loved ones whom we miss, people whose lives made an impact on our own. Of all those who were here, all those who contributed, all those who cared, and all those who are now gone. Our memories bring both joy and sadness. Let us not push these feelings away, for our recollections attest to our enduring importance of these friends, of this love, of our memories. May these brave and lovely spirits live again in our tender thoughts and prove that death and distance are powerless to sever the bonds that connect truly loving hearts. And now, as the Spirit moves you, I'd invite you to come forward down the center aisle and light your own candle for those who you would like to honor and remember this morning. And as you do so, if you are so moved, I'd invite you to speak their name. Dear God, eternal source of all being, be with us now as we hold our departed loved ones in our hearts. We remember the joys they gave us. We remember when they opened us to hope. We remember the sorrows we shared. We remember the life we shared with them, which is now ours to steward. They travel with us through something they taught us, which is now ours to do, through something they loved, which is now ours to carry. They travel with us through something we shared, which is now ours to hold. This morning we sense the spirit of those we've lost and those who we've loved. This presence is too shy for naming, too amorphous for full knowing, and yet as real as all the days we share. In sacred remembrance, let us now enter into a time of silent reflection. On this day of sacred remembrance, I'd like to hold up the name and the memory of my grandmother, Ann Egan. It's been many years since she died, but I still think of her often. You know, during my Grandma Egan's last years, my daughter Maya and I, who was just a little toddler at the time, <clears throat> we would drive to her house each week and take her grocery shopping. You know, I remember distinctly in the aisles of that grocery store, little Maya would attempt to, to push the cart, that enormous grocery cart, while my grandmother would hold on for dear life. <laughs> she just looked down at little Maya, you know, was working so hard, and she just smiled. When we would get finally to that cookie aisle, Maya would look longingly up at her great grandma and ask, Cookie? <laughs> Grammy Egan would smirk. She'd secretly look down at Maya. She'd whisper, Okay, you can get one, but don't tell your dad. <laughs> and after we would get back to her apartment, I would unload the groceries into her kitchen cupboards, and my grandma would always make the three of us some sandwiches. And I remember she would also um, open up that package of cookies and She'd put a few on our plates right next to the sandwich. And it, it always drove me crazy because Maya was two years old. 
And of course, she would go right to the cookie and ignore her sandwich. But nonetheless, we would then sit and we would enjoy this sacred time together. While we ate our lunch, my grandma would tell us stories of her life. She told us about when her husband, Frank, when they were just young, they would go dancing often at the VFW Hall. She would tell me how he was oh so handsome, but he was always stepping on my toes. <laughs> she told me the story of the great flood of 1955, when homes across her town were damaged, the water was rising, and several members of her extended family had to take up shelter in one home. This lasted for months during the recovery. She recalled how living in that house, it was way too crowded, it was damp, all those people together were kind of smelly, but still she treasured this time when her family was together, when they took care of each other, especially when times were hard. You know, family was always so important to her. Now, during those precious moments with my grandma, she would show us old family photos. She would reminisce about all those who had died long ago. All of these souls who I had never met. But you know, somehow, as she shared this with me, and I heard her stories, I felt like all of my ancestors were there in the room with me. Now across the span of time and sacred memory, as we talked about those departed souls from so long ago, I could feel their presence. As we sat in my grandma's apartment eating our cookies and our sandwiches, as we laughed and we remembered, somehow those beloved souls were right there in the room with us, laughing remembering with us, too. My grandmother died 11 years ago, but often I still feel like she is with me. You know, I feel her presence each year when the extended family gathers for Easter and we continue the family Lithuanian tradition of this egg-cracking contest. I hear her joyous laugh whenever my dad lets loose a long belly laugh. I see her sly smirk whenever my youngest daughter Lila is telling me a tall tale. I hear her whisper, don't tell your dad, every time Maya asks for a cookie. My grandma and all of our loved ones are here with us today, right now. We evoke their names, and we remember the times we shared together. For those that we love are, are never truly gone. Those who lived before us, those who struggled, who laughed, those who cried, they've not simply melted into dust. They've not disappeared. They are with us still. The lives they have lived hold us steady. Their words remind us and call us back to our true selves. Their courage and their love continue to hold us. You know, we, the living, we carry them all with us. We're their voices. We're their hands. Were their hearts. And today, let us remember to take them with us wherever the voyage of life may lead. So may it be. Amen. And as we prepare ourselves to leave this sacred space, 
I pray that the love which lives just beyond our understanding, the love which comes sometimes as a whisper, sometimes as a laugh, sometimes as a smirk, the love which transcends all the bounds of space and time, be with us now. Abide within us now, both this day and forevermore.